left the calendar online. Sorry. Uh, good evening, everybody. It's July 31st. This is the first public information um, workshop on the Wintermere Town Hall renovations. This is not a town council workshop, but it is a public information workshop. This is where we um, can listen to the residents and um, show you what the plans uh, look like and then get your feedback and make any amendments or any adjustments to that. Um, we'll start off with uh, Tanya Elliott Moore, who is the public works director, who's going to turn over to John Fitzgibbon. We would ask that you hold all uh, public comment to the very end, and then I'll jump back in and moderate and uh, direct the conversation from there. So with that said, this is being recorded. Um, so please hold all questions to the very end, and this will be posted on the town's YouTube channel so you can share it with anybody that was unable to attend tonight. And we are going to be having a second public information workshop um, in the next couple of weeks. So with that said, I'll turn it over to our public works director, Tanya. Good evening, everyone. And I'd just like to say that we're very pleased to host this public input session for members of the public to hear a review about the updates to our beloved town hall, and then for you to be able to provide comments on what we tell you here this evening. <clears throat> the restoration of town hall is needed and necessary to ensure we protect this beautiful piece of architecture now and into the future. The town council agreed to engage Mr. Tom Price, a historical architect who has renovated and revitalized historical facilities in downtown Orlando for this project. Mr. Price's firm is a nationally recognized architectural firm specializing in historic period styles and was instrumental in these historic, historic renovation projects in downtown Orlando. His work has been featured in such prestigious publications as Florida Architecture, Residential Architect, Florida Design, Professional Builder, Florida Builder, Unique Homes, Period Homes, Traditional Building, Orlando Magazine, and the Orlando Sentinel. Mr. Price was tasked with looking at Town Hall and to develop a draft plan based on three tenants. These are safety, accessibility, and functionality, historical aesthetic improvements, and additional enhancements that were based on feedback from residents and the users of Town Hall. So with that, I would like to turn it over to Mr. John Fitzgibbon to review the specifics of the changes under these three tenants and walk us all through the proposed floor plans. John, if you would. Thank you, Tanya. Um, in, in addition to that, we have reviewed this with the um, Historic Preservation Board uh, to get their feedback and input. And um, so hopefully they loved it. So hopefully we'll be able to have the same feeling here. So um, starting with the safety, accessibility and functionality, one thing we were looking at is uh, where we needed foundation enhancements, especially as related to the porch columns, um, looking at handicap accessibility, um, relative to um, the parking in proximity to the parking, improving stage access and adding handicap lift for accessibility, looking at new exits, both at the West stage area and the back of the kitchen area. And you'll see this on our plan when we get to it, looking at guardrails on the front of the building to uh, for safety concerns relative to the side step pieces, um, looking at removing the steps on the Northeast corner of the town hall because they are not accessible. They don't have proper landings. Um, and then also looking at providing access from a multi-purpose room to the porch, which you'll see. Um, looking at historic aesthetic improvements, we're looking at improved roof designs and roof enhancements for longevity. Looking at renovating the porch column stairs and rails with hardy board, uh, non-rottable material, replacing the rotted wood, uh, and also looking at a new metal roof for the entire uh, facility. Uh, looking at additional enhancements uh, through feedback that we got both from uh, from our town residents as well as uh, some of the clients that actually rent the facility as well as uh, ideas from the Historic Preservation Board. Looking at a new multi-purpose room, uh, some restroom expansion, additional family restrooms, um, exterior access to the town hall restrooms, and then also looking at new kitchen equipment, which would be under a separate study but still part of the town hall renovations. So if you don't mind switching to the next page, this is actually the current town hall plan. Um, we had uh, Tom actually uh, did a uh, great job on just giving us a plan of what we currently have as existing, which gave us the footprint and the floor plan to work towards understanding the best use and functionality and modifications that would be required to the existing facility. If you go to the next one, Robert, thank you. 
Um, this is actually the plan, and I'm going to walk you through uh, the blow up areas, but let me just walk you through this on an overall uh, kind of concept. One of the things that we are entertaining is moving the handicap ramp where it currently resides over to the uh, be the top left of the page, uh, which gets it closer in proximity to all of the handicap parking. So it'd probably come there or off of the back steps of the uh, of the northeast corner or excuse me, the southwest corner of the porch. Um, looking at uh, going to the kitchen area, just big picture wise, we're looking at um, enhancements to the kitchen equipment. We've also provided a uh, a serving counter, the full length of the uh, the back wall, north wall, and then above that, having additional storage and cabinets between the windows. Um, going down, we are adding some wing walls for the entry to the kitchen to just separate it, as well as providing the new entry on the north side of the building, coming from and removing the one on the east side and then providing some type of storage pantry. Um, if you look at the uh, stage area itself, you can see how we've modified the, the lower area for the handicap lift. So as people come in, uh, they can actually now get on onto the stage. On the other side, uh, we provided a clearer access for those exiting the stage, as well as providing a secure room for all of the audio equipment and sound equipment. Um, over on the left side, um, you can see the restroom enhancements. We've added two uh, family room restrooms, and then we've also expanded the existing bathrooms that allow us also exterior ac access to the restroom facilities, um, <clears throat> which will be great. We have the capability of locking the doors, but also using those for special events and functions, uh, even with the town hall being closed. And probably the biggest caveat is the uh, new multi-purpose room that we're looking in this kind of in 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 architectural design. We're kind of uh, in 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 the theory and the look. It's almost kind of like a summer kitchen kind of addition to the building. Tom's done a fantastic job of letting it blend into the environment as well as the aesthetics of the building. Um, so let me uh, let's scroll down to the next page, and I, you guys can see these in a little bit larger footprint. So if you look over on the plan that I was just on the left side, that's the plan I was doing. And you look at or just reviewing A is the new multi-purpose room. It has the accessibility through the restroom facility, also gives the capability that that restroom can be utilized just specific for the multi-purpose room and then accessibility directly onto the porch. Um, and the bathroom layout, you can see where we have the two family restrooms. Um, the one uh, on the upper page there, you can see the door going into the new multi-purpose room. So it gives that room functionality as with its own restroom facility as well, if needed. Um, and we have the other family restroom flanking each side. And then obviously the, uh, the additional restroom expansion. So if we want to go to the next page, Robert. Uh, here again, just a blow up, you can see the secured equipment room with the uh, direct access exit out um, from the from the uh, east or west side of the building. And then on the lower portion, you can see the wing walls in the relocation. If you see the remove steps or relocate steps, we're moving them over to the other side to give us the proper landing and then also proper accessibility for emergency egress and exiting. And in addition to that, obviously a new pantry, which could be lockable if necessary uh, for storage for specific events. And then obviously the handicap lift. And then you can actually see the guardrails on the um, main entrance to the facility um, at the entry landing. And these were just uh, decided to be put in for safety purposes as you're opening the doors and just provide general straight on access and exiting and entry to the building. Um, I think if we go to the next page, <clears throat> this is kind of the blended version of what we're looking at from the elevation perspective on the roof modifications. Um, having uh, spent a lot of time with Tom, um, and he can probably articulate on it a little bit more if need be, uh, we're looking at going to full hip roof designs, getting rid of the flat roof designs. The hip roofs in the uh, metal building are probably more indicative of the time period. So uh, in, according to Tom, getting rid of those articulate, the architectural articulations on the top of the roof, 
um, one from a long-term maintenance perspective, but also the, in a time-sensitive perspective relative to what the building would have looked like back in its day. Uh, so you can see the front elevations or the west elevation and the south elevation. On the left-hand side of the south elevation, you can see the little bump out for the uh, bridal suite in the uh, accessory building. Again, that separation we wanted from the building for the historic purpose and reason just to fit better with the, the aesthetics of the building. Um, and again, on the back side with the porch, looking at the hip roof design, um, on the west elevation, you can see it as well. And just uh, so that that kind of is the uh, the presentation on what we went through. Um, any questions? You know, we do have Tom. Tom, thank you so much for being on the call tonight. Um, appreciate you being here. Um, I guess at this point in time, we can open it up to any questions that anybody has in uh, further detail. Yeah, thanks, John. Uh, what we can do is ask if you want to raise your little hand icon or put a question in the chat box would be more than happy to answer those questions. Molly Rose. Thank you. I have a few questions. Um, how are we getting away without losing our historic rating? by like popping out the side of the building for restrooms or changing the roof materials. I thought they're pretty strict on what you can do and still keep your historic rating. I'm gonna to let Tom Price adjust, address that one, Molly. Yeah, I know that when we put the porch on, it could not really be attached to the, the original building in order to maintain that historic rating. Okay, sorry, go ahead, Tom. The original porch, you're right, it was not attached, but I think that was as much for structural reasons as for any other reasons. It was not bearing on the old building because it's not a good idea to bear uh, new loads on existing footings. It was in the back being not street visible um, was an, an important part as well. Um, the as as I understand it, this is on the National Register of Historic Places, and there, the the primary uh, review uh, power and purview lies with in this case the Town of Windermere's Historic Preservation Board, and at last week's meeting they um, liked what they saw. My intent was to add these uh, amenities and in the uh, effort to make them look as though they had all been built at the same time with the original structure, the roof massing and the dormers, the um, chimney, the overhangs, the knee braces, the siding, uh, everything now matches actually better than it does at this moment there. Um, the flat roof is really not something they would have used um, back then because they they didn't have nearly the ability we have now to uh, keep water um, from coming into a flat roof uh, in 1922, which is why you don't see many. Um, the porch in the rear I uh, pretty much kept it the same, except for the overbuild. Actually, this the anticipation is that the overbuild will just override the existing structure and to provide uh, positive drainage away from the uh, juncture of the um, of the two buildings. Now, I haven't probably answered your question uh, specifically. But I do think that the town of Windermere, as most local districts are, they that you would have in within your own control the purview of whether or not any addition or modification is appropriate. And the Secretary of the Interior's um, recommendations all say whenever possible. 
um, repair rather than replace and keep the materials the same. And the only overall change in materials would be the roof, which now is going to be uniform, except for the pitch. The pitch on the main building, I think it's about a five and 12, maybe six and 12. The pitch on the, on the, on, on the lower one-story structures is a three and 12, which is about the lowest that you can get um, and be sure that it's going to shed water. Um, and the roofing material will be, I mean, I was asked to um, add another hundred years. Uh, I was <laughs> hired last year uh, on the 100th anniversary of this building and yeah. asked to give it another hundred years. And so the, the metal roof uh, I've chosen is the 5V crimp. You've all seen it. It yeah, was the Tom, most prevalent. Tom, not, not interrupt, but I think what Molly was just asking was whether or not we would lose that historical designation. Is that yeah, correct, Molly? I mean, yeah, and I've done these things all over the country, but not in Florida, but um, we were never allowed to attach anything new to an, a historic building without losing its ex historic rating. And I don't believe that our local historic uh, committee um, has that ability to keep it. You still have to go back. So somebody should look at this before we do it. I personally, I'll, I'll tell you right now, I personally don't care about historic ratings, but I know our historic board does to the point that when we were going to move the little schoolhouse, they went back to whoever makes these designations and they said, if you move it, you lose your historic rating. So uh, I just don't want to be surprised later on down the line. But in my experience, um, which isn't minimal, you couldn't do this unless you can somehow attach it, I mean, build it without attaching it to the existing structure. Um, but you guys, I just, I'm throwing that out, do what you want, but that's what I have experienced in the past. A uh, cu couple other little questions. On the backstage, um, the porch there, I'd like you guys, well, again, this is just what I'd like, but you can do what you want, uh, to look at the outer railing there that and make it removable this time in case we wanna use that as a stage periodically. Um, so just, the, just the, the front railing there, and I don't know why there's a jog there, but I think that's for the roof um, support. And then I'd also, we've been talking lately about potentially putting, wrapping that porch onto the north side. And again, having the built the flexibility of if we wanted to use it as a stage someday, uh, we could do that on that side by the, uh, the uh, basketball courts. And I know there's an AC unit there that I assume you're gonna leave, but it could be worked into it. Uh, also, one other question, is there a north elevation yet? Is there That's a north it. elevation? <clears throat> Molly, was that your question? Yeah. Is there a north elevation yet? Or is no. this, this is yeah, what we have? There was no impact in this current design on the north elevation. Except <laughs> for the, I thought I heard that you, yeah, that yeah. one little thing there. And yeah. then, okay. And so the ramp yeah. that you're showing there is the existing ramp or in the same position is what you're saying. Okay, yes. Correct. I thought the ramp went a little bit further and closer to the yeah. building. And again, uh, one of the things that is important is that we, you know, this was us just coming up with a concept on what the program could be. Um, so in, in Tom, you know, obviously trying to be due diligent in, you know, our pricing with Tom and everything else, we decided not to do a, a east and a north elevation because the okay. Pretty minimal, but I think eventually when we have the construction drawings and move into final design, that we'll have you know the full elevations. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's correct. <clears throat> okay, so those are my comments for what they're worth. Thank you. Oh, one one other question I forgot: Is there anything happening upstairs over the restrooms where we currently have like storage and junk? 
like a second floor there. You know what I'm talking about, John? Are you yes, talking about, yes. Are you talking about up in the attic space? Yeah. Yes. Uh, the intent is not to touch that. Okay. Because we didn't want to get into the stairs and the doors and things that aren't probably too code centric. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, well, good try. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you, Molly. <clears throat> Next one I have up is uh, Stephen Weathers. <clears throat> Steven? All right, uh, I'll move to Tom's troop and then go back to Steven. Hey, how y'all doing? Uh, yeah, first of all, it's, it's a beautiful design. I also love the five V crimp roof, put it on my house. But uh, I agree with Molly on, mo on most things, but I do actually like historical significance or uh, designations and we're, we're losing them little by little in town. Over the years, some needed to go, and I, I can appreciate that. One of the examples is the building where the new police department is. That's a great addition to our town. Um, other than that, we were down to just a few left, um, and I do want to preserve them. This building, from what I've seen, and I'm not an architect or a builder, but just from my observation of being a weekend builder, most of the rock on most of the building is, is uh, limited to the back porch, which is not historic, so we could easily change that roof without losing any historic designation. And then, of course, the flat roof on the uh, the north side, I think it is south south side, south, yeah, where the bathrooms and stuff are. Uh, I do have a concern about losing historical designation. I don't think that, and this is what said with all due respect, I don't think anybody currently on the historic board, you know, has the license or per se to make that decision. I think we need to get somebody in there that can tell us emphatically whether or not doing this will cause us to lose our historical designation on it, because I think it is worth protecting. I love the design, Tom. I think you're great at what you do. It's beautiful. I would let you do my house, pay you to do my house any day of the week. Um, I don't agree with, I don't disagree with anything on there. As far as the design goes, I just don't want to compromise losing this historic designation, I think it would be much better with a metal roof. I think the bathrooms do need improvement and as well as the kitchen area, but I don't think that we should move forward with anything significant other than what we're doing already without getting somebody that can tell us emphatically that this will or will not cause us to lose our historic designation. Because once we do lose that, you, you won't get it back. And like I say, the porch on the back, which is where the most rotting is, and John mentioned a bunch of things that are going to be great for that back porch, is not historic anyway. So we can do those changes without, without any problem whatsoever. So that's my suggestion, is that we get somebody that can tell us whether or not we can make these changes. Um, and if we can, I'm all for it. I think it looks great. But if we can't, then we need to make whatever modifications we have to make to keep that. Because I, for one, do think that it's important that we keep historical designations in the town of Windermere. Sure, and Tom, this is this is Tanya. If you guys would let me just kind of clarify a few things before we move on. So first of all, absolutely, we're gonna check with the Department of Interior and ensure that nothing we're doing is going to lose the historic designation. But it's really important to actually go through this process first. And the reason for that is because we don't wanna go through a process where Tom has designed a floor plan that has not received community public input. And then we take it to the Department of Interior first, who says, no, 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 I don't like this. I don't like that. You can't do that. Um, and then we don't have public. Then we have to take it back because the public now doesn't like what they're seeing. So you don't want to go to Department of Interior first. We're coming to the public first, getting your input, and then we'll take it to the Department of Interior and make sure all of that is cohesive. Secondly, um, what was really critical with what Tom was doing is because this was a historical building, it has a certain um, date and time frame for its designation. He actually was changing the roofs back to something that actually was more in line with this period architecture. So I think the Department of Interior should be fine with that. We're actually bringing it back into the correct historical format by doing this. Secondly, extending those, those roof sides is protection. Um, and what Tom has explained to us is there was not enough eave 
out over the building to protect it from letting water get into a lot of that wood paneling. So what we want to make sure we do is protect it. So moving forward, um, we get another 100 years of life out of it. So I don't think they'll have a problem with us protecting it that way. So but none of this would go forward, Molly, without being sure that would be approved. But I didn't want to take it to interior. They bless it. And then we come back and public input takes us in a different direction and we have to go back to interior. So we're trying to take it in the right steps. Yeah, I think that's all that Molly and I both were asking, and that's perfect. I get, I get it, and I agree with that 100. percent That's just the first time I've heard it. So as long as that's what's going to happen, then yeah, I say we keep moving forward with it. Great job, Tom. Thank you. Thank you, um, Stephen. You on now? I think so. Am I on? Yes, sir. Okay. A uh, couple of comments, uh, Tom. I think your solution for the bathrooms is really, really innovative and it's a great solution. Gives us access to bathrooms for events, et cetera. Uh, I think uh, the comment uh, Tom made about the only rot on the, was on the back porch. I think the entire railing on the flat roof on the south had already rotten out. So, uh, John, you may comment to that, but I think that, that uh, south roof, flat roof is not a very good solution for uh, keeping water out and lasting 100 years. The uh, other comment I've got is the front steps to the whole building uh, are not equal spaced. They're not equal distance. I'm not sure for safety or anything else, we ought not to look at uh, redoing that concrete steps coming into the front door. Uh, I've always thought they were pretty uh, 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 well, they certainly don't meet any local or, or Florida code because of their uh, irregular heights. So I don't know if you looked at that at all, Tom, but I think that's something that may, may need to be addressed to bring safety into that front entry. The other thing I would comment on was a 5V crimp roof. Uh, there are hundreds of different types of 5V crimp roofs from uh, very minimal galvanized to very uh, quality roofs. So, Tom, I'd suggest we make sure we use a very good quality roof up there. Even the 5V crimp is the right historic uh, solution, but there are some of them that are very last 10 or 15 years. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tom. That's a great job. Thank you, Stephen. I could answer that on the front steps. I agree with you. I measured those. And the code doesn't allow any more than a quarter inch differential between any step and the average of all the others. And, and this does not meet that. Um, I, I think there's a, a way of doing it without completely uh, removing and rebuilding that. I imagine that concrete pad, um, I don't know whether that would be considered historic or not, but the, the sidewalk that leads up to the step, I mean, there's a an very awkward um, uh, an inch or two there rise between the sidewalk and the first step, which could be easily rectified. And then yeah. um, otherwise, make sure it's up to code. Thank you. All right. Good thank job. you, Stephen. All right, Donna. Oh, hey, Robert, thank you. So um, I guess I'm allowed to speak. I'm on Historic Preservation Board, but I've only been on it for several months. So I'm just going to speak as like a resident, if that's okay. Um, Molly, I fully agree with your concerns. I think Joan Foglia said the same thing. My initial concern is if you change it at all, will it still be historic designation if we add on to it? And I do hear that the town um, is reassuring us that it will be. And Tom, I fully agree with you, Tom Stroop. I don't feel qualified at all, um, having just joined. I've never even built my own house. I don't know how to build something historic. Um, so I'm not sure that my vote or council really matters. I'm, I feel as though I'm just a volunteer on the committee. So I'm always looking to people like Tom, the architect, right? And Robert, the town manager to do it properly. 
I do have several other concerns. I hope I can bring these up. It is a public forum. Um, after being the chair of Park and Recreation for 20 years and accepting grants, what I feel I've learned about grants is that there's generally something hidden or lying that then you end up being indebted to. So I don't know how we make certain if we accept a grant that there's nothing that in five or 10 years we would look back and go, why didn't we personally fundraise? And could this grant possibly be a detriment to our town? So I would like someone to really be certain if we accept a grant and if I'm on historic preservation board and I'm going to say yes, I would really like to make certain that that is, which I'm sure it's hard to know down the future. Um, then I also um, read where I believe there is a chance that you could move Healthy West Orange, which is a, a lovely organization, and they wanted to build um, a band shell in town. And then I did hear that there was a possibility that those funds that they're wanting to donate could be moved toward restoring town hall. And again, I would just want to make sure that if the town chooses to accept that, that there aren't a lot of things attached to the donation. Don, I can adjust the, number one, if we receive a state or federal grant, we'll have the contract and agreement in place um, prior to it going to town council. So everybody knows what they're responsible for and what would have to be, you know, remaining in perpetuity, kind of like the FERDAP grants, uh, the issue that we have in Lake Down Street. Um, and then the conversations with Healthy West Orange are still yet to be had um, relative to the possibility of moving funds from one project to another. So we haven't had the board discussion yet. Um, but that course. is something that I we're trying understand. to explore. I just wanted to throw some concerns out there, like in the mix, just something for people to think about, right? Anything else, Donna? No, that's it. All right. Thanks, Donna. Uh, anybody else? Going once, going twice. All right. Thank you all for spending this evening with us, uh, the last day in July. Um, we appreciate your public comment. Uh, we will make sure that we have a lot of the answers for you by, prior to the uh, second uh, public information workshop, um, which is when, uh, Tanya? Sorry, I have not figured that out yet. Hold on. All right. We will advertise it and make sure that we do have some of the, a lot of these answers to your questions uh, prior to that date. And again, this is just the second by the Apple, you know, HPB was the first, this is the second. Um, so there's many bites to have um, relative to this project, uh, not only for the project itself, but also for the funding. So there's gonna be a lot more conversations had uh, relative to this, um, you know, town council workshop than actual town council meeting uh, where they can vote on it. I have it on so, my calendar. I think it's right. August 16. August what? Yeah, you already sent it. Yeah, I have August 15 also. August 15? 1-6. 16. All right. Um, August 16th will be the you've second. Got all the, you've got all the architectural details that you can share with the other Tom, <laughs> right? Yes, we have, we have everything. Everything you see here is in the uh, agenda packet. Um, and if it's not, we can make sure that he receives it. Um, but yeah, well, the, the next meeting is going to be on August 15th or 16th, I'm sorry, August 16th, 1 6 at 6 p.m. It'll be virtual. So again, um, this is being recorded. So let your friends, neighbors, 
um, know about the next meeting and if they want to get some background information, you know, we'll probably do the same presentation um, for the next meeting, but you can also share the, uh, uh, the YouTube video. So again, thank you all for attending tonight and for the great feedback and uh, we'll see you on the 16th, um, if not sooner than that. So thank you all. Thank you everyone, much appreciated. Have a great evening.